What began as a dream to bring electrical power to the Cherokee Nation evolved into this dramatic feat of engineering, one so unique that it continues to draw visitors from around the world, thousands a year, for a tour of this multi-arch dam. Pensacola Dam, which spans nearly a mile, turned the Grand River into the Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Henry Holderman first envisioned the project in the late 1800s, but it took nearly 40 years to secure federal funding for the venture, which came in the midst of the Great Depression. Even if you've driven across it countless times, it's not until you wind your way down into the inner workings of the dam or see the sheer girth of the structure up close that you truly begin to appreciate it. What it boils down to, as I look at it, is 51 small dams side by side. Very labor intensive, not a popular design for that reason, uh, but it does conserve materials, which was the name of the game during the Depression. Uh, 3,000 men built this dam in exactly, start to finish, 33 months. Work continued around the clock. 1.6 million cubic yards of earth and rock were excavated. Once the concrete work began, a 24 hour a day continuous pour went on for 20 months. As the height of the dam increased, so did the dangers of working on it. Thirteen men lost their lives during construction, many falling to their deaths, until nets were borrowed from the Golden Gate Bridge project in San Francisco. And still, the voices of detractors kept getting louder. It was the Great Dust Bowl. Uh, the, uh, some of the naysayers were saying, hey, why don't you build the dam? It's never going to fill up. And uh, they, some of the experts were predicting as high as eight or 10 years for the lake to fill up. But when the dam was completed and the flow of the river stopped, Grand Lake was full in less than a year, bringing tourism dollars to the area along with Oklahoma's very first hydroelectric system.